I don't Sadly, know. I, I hung on to Game Informer for a long time. I mean, I started collecting those later when it was the whole like, oh, become a member of the GameSpot or Game not Game GameStop Plus account or whatever it was to get like better discounts and trade in values. I mean, that was that was my job for like six years. I mean, yeah, get that nice employee discount, right? Or <clears throat> this one fell off a truck. Not kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Bad. Yeah, so I want to start off. You said Redbox is closing? Or like going out of business? Uh, well, some of the Redboxes are apparently going out of or being taken away from the the cornerstone, like the Walgreens and whatnot. The company recently bought it like some investment firm, I heard. Or maybe it was Wendy, I'm not sure. But I, I just remember hearing that someone recently bought them out and they were taking away some of the units. So it had me thinking like, I wonder if the ones we have are gone or if they're gonna be you know, around for a little bit. Because what really, what options are there really to rent? To like to try things besides like you know the occasional put in our credit put in a credit card try for seven days kind of thing. I mean, I'll That's, be I'll be honest. I didn't know Redbox was still a thing. I didn't know you could still rent physical copies of games. Well, I had a uh, GameFly up until ooh, uh, GameFly years ago. Five years ago. GameFly still a thing? It was as of half a decade ago. It was as of last time I checked, which was half a decade <laughs> ago. Yeah, it was still there. Yeah, it was still a thing. It was, it was definitely. So I mean, but like, isn't that what we're doing with Game Pass and like PlayStation Ultimate or whatever they're calling themselves now? Um, I mean, I, not really. That's more of a buffet style. That's a you know, you pay once and you get all you can eat kind of thing. Because they could always take away a certain thing off the menu you want. Well, I mean, but the games stay on Game Pass long enough for us to enjoy them. Even when they've been games that have been on there for a couple of months. Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, some games I'll be like, oh, add it to my play later. And then a month later it drops off or whatever. Uh, the last one I can remember that I was playing and that went away right away was Celeste, I believe it was. I was going through that and I was about two thirds of the way through it. And then it's like, oh yeah, next week it's going away. And sure, I could have beat it in that time. But I don't like the stress of having to be like, well, you have this window to do it like in it would be one thing if when they added it to the store i had that information ahead of time be like hey this is going to relieve at this date you have six months to play it or whatever that's fine it would still suck but i'd rather know than not know you know because like what if you pick it up a week before they take it off the thing you know or a few days before and you're like oh man i'm really loving this i mean the idea i'm sure is they want you to buy it after that but but it's still better than it used to be right where you used to have it for just a weekend you got it for like two days, three days, if you were lucky, or if you yeah, had like the ninety-nine cents extra for the extra day or whatever. If you it was. had, if you had parents that just forgot to take you back up there, and then you just you're stuck with that game because now you're just too embarrassed to go back to turn it in. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Well, with that, and then you just go to another store because you're like, okay, we're gonna owe them like a hundred bucks to get anything <laughs> out of there. So let's just go to the one across the street. <laughs> we're just gonna wait yeah. for a new one to open up. We, can't, we like, can't we can't show our faces there anymore. We've got to wait for the new silver screen to show up down the street. Let's just wait until they go out of business. Or when you have multiple ones up at the same time and you're renting and you just drop the wrong product off at the wrong store. Do you remember? Um, and you might actually not remember this because of how long ago it was. Do you remember the Zenith store? I'm a little more Zenith. than Zenith because I don't remember a store just called Zenith. It was a Zenith store. So Zenith was a brand of television, electronics, radio back in the day. Oh yeah, I'm familiar with the brand. Yeah, so they I just used don't to be the store. They they used to have a store in the town we grew up in, and the front half of the store was Zenith Electronics, television, stereos, things of that nature. Um, and in the back of the store, it was just a warehouse, and it was just concrete floor, rafters. And they had these wooden shelves set up with just movies and video games Betamax uh, VHS and uh, Nintendo games in the beginning there was the Zenith store that Zenith store 
there was that, light. That Zenith store turned into the Blockbuster. Okay, because so the Zenith store was not the Imagination Place off of downtown. Okay, no, gotcha. the Imagination Place was a totally different place, S- totally okay. different place from Silver Screen. This is how confusing it used to be just to totally rent things back in the day. That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. You would have this just <laughs> clear plastic case, and you're like, all right, we've got to turn this video game. You're like, where did we get this from? And you have to share an awkward glance because we didn't drive back then. It was up to your parents. <laughs> yeah, and they were all in different corners of the town. Do you remember TCBY? It was the most early 90s thing ever. Late 80s, early 90s thing ever. TCBY. TCBY? TVCY. I don't know. I'll Google Let's... it after this. Um, but it was that uh, yogurt place you could go and you could rent movies and video games from. And if you return them, they gave you that little token or coin. And oh, for the gumball like a... machine, right? And that was a slot machine. Oh, was it? That the one for the free machine, ice cream cone? And you could get a free, free ice cream rental? cone or free rental. Stands for the country's best yogurt. I know it was like something yogurt. Didn't uh, Family Video need its maker recently I like I don't to keep be. up with uh rental places I didn't even know there were places you could still get physical rentals from yeah you could up for until I mean I want to say they still have the back of the red box thing I want to say they, they sold or not sold they rented I guess you could buy them too you know put ps4 ps5 and blu-rays and P- dvds I assume still I mean you'd always get the uh scratched one so you couldn't finish it the last red box i recall renting to this day i can remember was uh kingsman 2 no i can't i can't even recall the last movie i rented that was the last video game i rented back 2018 no because everything's digital five years ago now netflix i mean netflix started off as a red box like thing right back when you had to send off and then uh they'd show up in your mail and you just have to hope to God it was A, it was the right disc, and B, that it was playable in whatever system you had, which for me was a PlayStation 2 at the time. They, I want to say, as of a couple of years ago, they still had that business. I mean, they broke it off into another company, but they had like 23,000 members still, I want to say. 23,000? Something like that. That's you know, it's like, a, it's like a group of hardcore physical lovers. And grandparents, I'm sure. <laughs> you might want to rephrase that. Are you a are you a hardcore physical lover? <laughs> You're hardcore. Do you, you love to... to get physical? How you feel about the physical discs, man? I kind of know. Part of me kind of misses physical discs, and then part of me is like, I'm at work and a new game comes out, and I can just pull out my phone and go, "Hey, install this when I so I can play it when I get home, Steve." If you have internet, yes, yes. If the internet infrastructure was as widespread as it should be, yes, I'm with you there. There's a small part of me that's still like, in my instance, I have to rely on mobile internet and they won't, because I guess there's too few customers out there. I can't get the at-home internet thing, so I have to use my phone, you know, and it's nice to be able to download some stuff, but like I have a 40 gig limit, you know, so... Unless I'm at someone else's house. Granted, I'm playing on PC now, so it doesn't really matter, because name a PC game that's on that's been physical. When was the last time video games were physical on PC? 2012? Uh, I remember having the World of Warcraft. Maybe. The World of Warcraft, like, 8-disc install back in the yeah, day. Yeah, that, ba- uh, that was the Burning Crusade battle chest, I believe. I don't even think... Oh, yeah, uh, the battle chests. Yeah, they just come with a, just a stack of discs, and it's like, well, this is my afternoon. Have right. to wait for it, and you couldn't just pop them in and walk away because you had to change discs when they were ready. Those few people who had like multiple discs in their system just for that, or uh, copying DVDs, CDs. multiple drives. Well, hey, that was the hack we had back in the day with VHSs. If you remember that, we go to a friendly local rental place, run a couple of VHSs, get some blank ones. Oh yeah, Johnny I mean, Five is that, alive. That that was illegal. And we never did that. We were good boys. Yeah, pop in short circuit over here, pop in a blank disc, boom, insta classic. <laughs> Johnny Five is indeed alive. That I, I think that was a hallmark, right, of all the kids of the '80s and '90s. That uh, your movie collection, your family movie collection, was just a bunch of VHS tapes with like 
written in black marker the title or some vhs's have like three movies on it and so you had to like fast forward through the first movie to get to the like middle one and then the oh, third yeah. one the third movie ended like three quarters of the way through <laughs> so you had to put it in tape two. <laughs> oh, the jank man the jank sometimes i do miss it i do miss the it's better now getting the content like consuming the content is better now but finding said content was way better when it was physical because i miss going down to the store walking up and down the shelves because well, one it wasn't the, the ads you could ignore because they were just posters or whatever but like you got to you know interact with the stuff it was a little bit easier to me than just like scrolling through oh let me go to the netflix or hbo and scroll through their endless list you and know 90 percent of the things i don't want to see you know let me tell you that that what you're describing that little ritual where you're scrolling through netflix or all your other streaming services that is a uh, when you're married that's a whole thing and you could spend hours two hours scrolling through there trying to find something to watch and like you'll find something check with the partner nope partner doesn't want to watch that they'll go through it's like oh what about that like ah oh, and so we end up watching a movie we both have already seen a million times from like the 90s it's like picking dinner now dinner after after 10 years together we we i've got the dinner thing down well yeah but now, now if we're driving around or like ordering out or anything like that no no that's that that's still a thing that's a never-ending battle because that was always my re- routine it was like you want to go here no not i'm not feeling that you want to go here no i don't want that well how about this no I was like, okay, how about you suggest a place? I'm like, no, I can't think of a place. I'm just hungry. You know <laughs> no, what I'm I like. Not, I'm not here to make suggestions. I'm here to shoot down your suggestions. <laughs> right. I think that's contractual oh. obligation in any relationship, though. Probably. Probably. And I was guilty of it the same. I would but at least, do so so you you doom scroll through Netflix or HBO Max. Or no, that's the thing. Now, I have Max such now. the... I mean, I have FOMO, sure, like most people. That's, I mean, I need to catch up on, like, not The Walking Dead. What is it? Uh, Last of Us. The Last of Us is currently out. I need to catch up on that. But I'm the kind of person, if you give me too much, I just won't go through it. I'd be like, eh, it's too much of a pa- hassle to... to I, don't have, I don't have the energy, but, nor do I have the inclination to expend energy scrolling through four yeah. million titles. I'd rather just pop on a game and be done with it rather than being like let me decide for an hour what i want to watch by the time i find it i'm not interested in watching anymore yeah no box art no official box art so we're not having any kind of like no Mega Man fiascos for Mega Man one first of all wait, wait, second wait, of all what is Mega Man fiasco the original Mega Man box art for Mega Man one one of his like, oh. hips are broken and he's like hunched over. <laughs> oh, you mean the like American a... box art where he's got a handgun? <laughs> <laughs> he's got a handgun and like he looks like a pissed off 60 year old Vietnam vet. Get off my lawn! <laughs> he, yeah, he would go great in uh, in one of those games or comics. That is hilarious. But that's, that's all we had to go on back in the day, man. Was that janky box art? Because we didn't have YouTube. We didn't even have... I mean, there were magazines and stuff that existed, but, like, we were kids. We didn't have our own magazine subscriptions back I then. I did have a so, subscription to uh, Tips and Tricks. But no, you would just... So the whole... the whole It was a whole ritual, right? You had to be good all week. You couldn't get in trouble in school, because when the weekend rolled around, you were going to go and you are going to beg one of your drive-capable parents to take you to the local rental place so that you could spend at least 20, 30 minutes running around that place just looking at the cases sometimes looking at the cartridges themselves if they didn't have box art or grabbing the box art reading a little blurb on the back or looking at screenshots and that's all you had to go on and some of the boxes were nifty i I remember i remember being excited by a few of the box arts i mean it was always disappointing i preferred the ones obviously that had the game box art like the screenshot of the game rather than just like obvious you know box art that had nothing to do with the game uh, but that's how we end up playing like classics, man. What was that other one? Just... Cyborg Justice. That Cyborg was... Justice for the Genesis. I that know exactly one was what chosen you're about. specifically for the box art because I that think I had a one we picked up in Picture Show Studio. You remember the store? We picked it up I remember because I remember walking past it, and it was still back when they had the Primal Rage arcade cabinet by the popcorn machine in the back, Jeez. and. 
it was on like the furthest shelf as soon as you walked by. But it was over there. I just remember it was the, like the blue and yellow gold or the, the blue and gold robot, one sitting with a buzzsaw, like going like 3D towards the your face. And I'm like, dude, a robot with a buzzsaw, multiplayer, side scroller. What's not to love? Just robots, buzzsaw, multiplayer. Let's let's give that a shot for three days, yeah. Yeah. No kidding. And then you get to that first jump where you need the pneumatic legs. Oh man, it was <laughs> it was RoboCop all over again. Like so many games back then would just shoot your kneecaps out right off the gate, like in the second or third level, and you could never beat it. And it was to promote. Some games were purposely designed like that to promote multiple rentals. I found that out about uh, oh, what game was it? Lion so King on the Genesis. Lies. Lion King. You remember that game? We used to rent that a ton. Aladdin and the Lion King. I remember. The, so Aladdin, it was the carpet level. Uh, on the way out of the uh, Cave of Wonders. The Cave of Wonders, and it was those games were purposely designed like that to promote multiple rentals. Now that I think about it, those are two examples. Are both Disney? You evil little mouse. So now you're in the you're in the store. You've got like 15, 20 minutes. God help you if your parents are waiting out in the car for you, right? Because now the clock's really well, Thankfully, ticking. our mom was good about wanting the movies, so we'd usually have about... Because she usually picked out seven to she nine was, She was just as indecisive so we had, as we were, so we had like an hour, hour yeah. and a half to roam around that place. Because we usually got to go... As soon as we go in, we'd either beeline it for the video games if we knew what we wanted. If not, we would... Do the circle around, see all the new stuff that came out movie wise, and then at the end of that, it went straight into the movies or games, and then we go pick out our game. Um, I still remember the blue carpeting and the smell of stale popcorn. Uh, back in the Zenith store, Good it times. was just concrete and the smell of asbestos. Mm. You had your busts, so like you'd go and it's like, man, this game looks awesome, and you get it home, you pop it in, you're like, wow, this sucks. And so there, there goes your weekend. That was your whole weekend right there. Oh, what game was it? Oh, you've got an example of one? Yes. I remember what game. I'm trying to think. I mean, Taz was kind of one. Like, Taz was one of those ones that we liked playing just because we were a fan of the TV show. But the game... I don't remember it being, like, unfair, unfair, but it was a bit jank. For, the first, for being the first, like, two levels again, being hard. I'm trying to I'm trying to think uh, of a, a bust we had on a rental. I remember the time when we had to lie about not knowing what the ESRB was because we had the <laughs> N64 and we decided we wanted to rent Duke Nukem and we I, did. Duke Nukem 3D. And no one I stopped remember us. that. I remember I that. was I think 13 at the time maybe and then I remember two days after having it cuz you get to rent it 5 days back then. Two days of having it, they found out it had cursing in it, and then they're like, oh, getting mad at us, and then we're like, we didn't know, oh my god, we didn't, they didn't tell us this had this stuff in it, they should have warned us. Well, okay, so that's something... <laughs> Causing us to have to go back to the store where she explained the situation of what we told her, and then I'm like, okay kids, this is what the ESRB is here, we're gonna go let you exchange the game for another week, just make sure you get one that says uh, E or whatever. Or you'd rent... Oh, another gem of the rental places we used to go to was apparently uh, so Dragon Ball Z. We were into Dragon Ball Z big back in the day. Everyone was. Are you about to say the Tree of Might? Uh, tree of Might? No. Um, that's, a, that's a good example. No. Video games. Um, GT. Grand Tour. Oh, yeah. Dragon Ball GT on the PlayStation. The first introduction for us to the, to the and probably a lot of people before a lot of people did in the States of a uh, Maj, not Majin, but the baby series. <coughs> oh yeah, no one knew. We didn't know what the hell any of that was. Super Saiyan Four. We're like, why? What, what is Super really Saiyan Four? <laughs> that game was so trash. We were so happy to have it. We rented it multiple times. I was about just to say because yeah. it was Dragon Ball. That it, game was it, so it trash. Was. It was the most obtuse fighting game. No, no I still to this day do not know how to do some of the game mechanics. The fact that we played it as long as we did was a testament to how naive we were as kids and also how desperate we were for certain content. It's just random. If it had any kind of like anime or mecha anything looking thing on it, I would rent it. 
Indeed. Oh, especially Mecha for me, because like I mean, I I've always loved anime, but I've always loved anime Mecha too. I mean, that's is that how half we the reason is I'm that how we got into Armored Core? Did we rent that first? Because I don't think we owned it at, at the time. Yeah, I've never owned Armored Core. Uh, Armored Core, that was another one. Uh, other games I rented. Uh, we played Metal Gear. I'm uh, Metal Gear. Metal Slug. All the time in the arcade. Anytime we came across an SNK cabinet, that oh, had if it was SNK, it, it was top notch. She had to stop at an SNK cabinet. I mean, that and Outlaw was it? Outlaw Star? No, Outlaw Star, Star was an anime. Sunset Riders. Sunset, Sunset Riders. 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 That's what it's called. Um, yeah, God, that game's hard to Man, find. That, was... that game is expensive as hell now. We used to play that all the time. I know. It's one of the few like. There's a few cabinets. If I could buy the straight up cabinet, you know, that's one of them. Though I probably should make like a main cabinet one of these days. Oh, I oh, I space. get you. I get you. I've just always wanted. I mean, what video game nerd hasn't wanted an arcade at one point or another? Who knows? Oh man, I rented. Uh, I rented Tekken. Tekken three. I rented Tekken three so many times. Because yeah, we own Tekken two, right? Yes, own Tekken. Or was two. it Tekken one we had? No, I had Tekken two. Okay. And then I Tekken remember. 3 was it the was one the with most, the ogre. It was the most 90s birthday ever. Mother came home with presents for me. And it was Tekken 2, Final Fantasy 7, and Dizzy Up the Girl <laughs> from Goofy Man. Dolls. Oh, wait. So you did get Dizzy Up the Girl with Final Fantasy 7? <laughs> yes. That's why I associate in my mind Final I was Fantasy say, 7 was, and Dizzy Up the too. Girl are like... Same. Same, bro. Dude, I thought that was just me. I thought that was insane. I was like, why do I always think of... Goo Goo Dolls. Because I used to listen to Final Goo Goo Fantasy Dolls Seven, and man. Play Final Fantasy Seven. I know that's why. Man, Earth was called I don't Artists, know. This but... is this is episode two. We're already throwing my soul out there that I associate Goo Goo Dolls. <laughs> it's like we can't watch these guys anymore. They listen to Goo Goo Dolls. <laughs> it was a different hey, time in the '90s. It was acceptable. Hey, okay. I still like them. I'm not. I'll go out and live and say it. I'll take the heat. I still like it. They. Okay. Their sound has changed. Um, I mean, I don't I mean, know what they sound like now. I like that album, is what I'm saying. Oh, no, Disney Up the Girl is fantastic. They do not sound like that anymore. Because that was Black Balloon, Slide, like all the classics. But, uh, yeah. Man. Broadway's Dark Tonight. You know, man. Neon City Gaming. Staying on topic. Like professionals. Uh, yeah, no, so Ren and Tekken 3 a lot. Um, uh, Oh, you did answer my question. Is it the one with the ogre? Tekken the boss? 3 had the Aztec guy, who I think was named Ogre. Yeah, he's the he was the green dude with the the snake, the snake arm. arm yeah. and the I said Aztec. Alligator could be Mayan, could be Olmec. I don't know myself. Well, I mean, he had American two forms. He had a form one where he was just the green dude with the, uh, I want to say the Aztec helmet or whatever, like the Mayan, like that kind of style. Um helmet and then his evolved form is the one where he had the, like the wing and the, the snake arm and his evolved form was bullshit that's what it was oh it was like every Tekken boss the arena with the spikes like every Tekken boss like when did this game suddenly turn into Mortal Kombat that was another game we rented Mortal Kombat because I never owned Mortal Kombat uh, oh this is how we're going to tie it back to rentals see we're experts the last game I remember renting from an <laughs> brick and mortar store was Mortal Kombat Armageddon me and uh, Armageddon me and Kalen, we re- rented that thing for like two and a half months we forgot to <laughs> two and pick and a half it back up months. because well because it was one of those games where like uh, oh man we're enjoying this game we should buy this game and then we just kind of forgot to go up there and get it oh no this is around the time uh, at the end of Blockbuster's days where they were like if you keep it past a week we'll charge you for the game the full amount of the it, game and you bring we, it back and bring it back we only charge you like 10 bucks for a restocking fee that's what it was and we were just like oh we're just bring it back and like, we're done with because this no one, would return, one no one would return anything we basically got down to like we were describing earlier you just wouldn't go back and show your face there anymore because you had like four million dollars in overdrive <laughs> or uh late fees and they're like please please just return our precious game we will, we will let our people go okay We'll give you what you want. How long have you been in there? Are the hostages being well fed? Someone else wants to watch Liar Liar, okay? Bring it back. So, someone else needs Jim Carrey in their life. Please, <laughs> bring Liar Liar back. 
Please, for the love of God. We've only they need got, joy in their life. We've only got one copy of Rodney Dangerfield, okay? Or uh, Rover that? Dangerfield. Rover, Rover Dangerfield. We've only yeah. got one copy of Rover Dangerfield, please. For the love oh, of man. God. Dude, we need a... That's the that besides the thief and the cobbler. That's another animated movie I need a copy of because that was a classic where, childhood. Where okay, so apparently a tangent. Apparently, the thief and the cobbler has a million different versions. Yes, and um, it took twenty three years to make. It took twenty three years to make, or something like that. The version we had was the Matthew Broderick Before. version. We yeah. had it. We had it recorded, right? Like. On what we were describing earlier, we had it on one of those tapes that where you just like bootleg yeah, the hell the, out of the recorded dual deck tape. Yeah. Over, yeah. So did we rent that one time and then just have it bootleg? Where did we rent that from? I don't remember. It just conjured itself into existence one day. I don't know because I don't know who brought it. Because I had never seen the cover of the movie until 2003 or something when like I got DSL. Or something, because yeah, before that it was recorded. I don't know who. It was either a rental or it was one of the because we also borrowed a lot of movies. Yes, that and it couldn't have come from. It may have not have even come from a rental place because I don't know if you remember, but we used to go and you could rent movies from your local library, your local public library. Yes, your library card. You used to watch the uh, Mister Rogers there. Get the his his volume collectors or whatever back when they put like four to six episodes of a show on a VHS. Hit up some Reading Rainbow. Yes, Reading Rainbow, uh, Zumafu. When we had run ourselves out of every, we had too many late fees at all the other rental places. We went to the library. Well, we were also at the Li- library too. Cause library it was free had those hidden to, gems. You know, paying for it. Oh man. Uh, but no, you, I remember uh, we used to rent games that like we would get just for multiplayer, and then we'd play the hell out of them. Uh, Arrow Fighters Assault. Arrow Fighters Assault. Uh, what and was then... that? That stupid little VW Volkswagen Beetle Beetle Adventure Racing. Yeah, I was we used to play that a lot. Tiny Tunes on NES. We used yes. to rent that a lot. Oh man, you want to go back? Mother's favorite game, Bugs oh, Bunny's uh, birthday Bugs castle. Bunny. Yeah, she, I thought it was birthday so blowout. Good. Was her favorite? No, it was. Maybe it's not birthday castle. It's it's the one with the castle. Crazy castle. Bugs Bunny's crazy castle. Is that yeah, it's crazy one? castle and birthday blowout. No, it was the castle. One. Birthday blowout was her favorite. It was the castle one, the one where you can't jump. I remember because I couldn't play that game as a kid. Yeah, it, was, like, had, uh, it was a little bit more cerebral. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Crazy Castle. Yeah, Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle. Oh my god. She used to rent that all the time. Take a guess of when it was released. 1989. Yeah, in Japan. Oh no, and in America. It was February, Japan, and then September. Because I remember what house we used to live in when uh, she used to rent that, and I used to watch her play it. Stopped renting games. I think in the PS2 era. Like I, didn't, I just didn't rent because in the PS2, when the PS2 came out, I was going into high school, and so like I got a part time job. I bought my the only game I I got a PlayStation 2 specifically to play Metal Gear Solid 2. I mean, that's the whole reason I bought a PS3 was for. I did rent quite a bit because that's why I rent, rented that Excalibur game that was like an isometric uh, Diablo style where King Arthur was clad in all black and gold armor with this epic looking uh, Excalibur. I can't remember if the game was good because I was playing with my, this is back when I had, remember how wireless technology for controllers was still pretty new? Like the back when you had, to, coming out. you had to put the dongle in the system and then sync it yeah. to that. Do you remember my silver one, that Pelican I had? For the GameCube? No, for the uh, PlayStation, PS2. No. It was a gray one that had like sunken, it was, it kind of reminded you of a GameCube because I think it was trying to steal like the Wave Bird's Thunder. But it was the first, one of the first wireless controllers for the PlayStation. I actually bought it from Picture Show Studios in uh, 
to see because we were in Oklahoma at the time. So whatever the local picture show studios was, bought it there, and it was a Pelican brand. So it was like Pelican. It was a, another big brand like Mad Cats. Right, it was Pelican, I remember Pelican. Mad Cats. I remember Pelican. And that thing, because it required a lot of D-pad action. That game, if you had to do anything with the D-pad, God help your soul, because that was the worst D-pad imaginable of any game of any device I've ever used in my life. Like, it was one of the ones where you press down, it would press up to the right. Wow. That's how bad it was, yeah. <laughs> it was... Thankfully, the rest of the controller worked decently. I mean, it was an early, you know, wireless controller, but, you know, you wanted, I wanted a wireless controller, PlayStation didn't make one at the time. I remember uh, renting a lot more PlayStation 1 games than I do any PlayStation 2 games. I remember we played a lot of Tenchu. Tenchu 2. Tenchu. We rented Tenchu a lot. Uh, Tenchu Wrath of Heaven. That was the one I rented a lot until we ended up buying it from the, the rental place. Because it was a lot harder to rent. Because game people complain about how expensive games are now. Games were expensive back then. They were like $60, $70. For cartridges. Oh, yeah, I believe it was... And that was back in, like, 90s money. Because, you know, every cartridge had different number of chips, and the more chips, the more expensive the physical card. Like, I want to say it was Final Fantasy three or something like that. It was 80 bucks back in the day. And that was like the, the, 90s. the Japanese 6, the American 3. Yeah, yeah, our, yeah the actual lore-wise 6, but the American 3. One, okay, something that you, we had to deal with is rentals back in the day. Uh, you wanted to rent a game that had cartridge-based saving. You'd save your save file to the cartridge. And then you man. just had to pray no one else like got oh, that man. cartridge before you got it back the next weekend and like deleted your save file. Or that you'd luck out. all the time. You'd luck out and you'd get like, uh, you'd rent a Pokemon game. And like they, you get the game, and someone has played on there for like 120 hours, and they've got all the cool Pokemon. You're like, yeah, a bonus. And you never delete the Pokemon because that's rental etiquette. Except someone <laughs> would delete it if it was yours, of course, because that's what happened to me. Uh, and what's funny is looking back now, me and Mikey, both a uh, friend of ours, was we determined that we're pretty much we were deleting each other's save files. Because we can't imagine who else was running it at that time. Oh, I remember that. You were both talking about the same game, and then he said, like, some, some asshole keeps was deleting my save file every time, and then, like, it turned out Same thing that happened to me. I'll be like, man, I was, like, halfway through the game, and I come back, and my gut file's gone. I'm like, oh, my Breath, God. Or, uh, Ogre Battle 64. Man, to this day. Was that what it was? Ogre Battle 64? We rented that one a lot, too. It was Ogre Battle 64. Oh, my gosh. Fantastic game, but... Cartridge uh, space saves on a rental site. Blast what? Core. That's what it was. Blast Core. For Nintendo 64. And it was the most wild premise. It's like, there's an 18-wheeler hauling an armed nuclear weapon or something oh, like that. And you had to... Yeah, like, Blast use, Core. You had to use different, uh, like, vehicles. Like, you started off with, like, a dump truck, I think. And you just had to blow through buildings and stuff to, like, create yeah, a You had to, like, swing the on. back end of the dump truck around to smash more and buildings. Then towards and then... the... Towards the end of the game, you've got, like, a mech that you, like, butt stop through buildings with. Yes. And then you had the little, like, motorcycle with, like, machine guns on the side. That was a good rental. That was a good damn game. That was a good rental because, I mean, yeah, outside of being, like, someone who's really into that game, you weren't going to make it to the end anyways, and, you know, to keep it saved or whatever. That's, that game was crazy. It, it was fun, but crazy. I remember it being good hard. box art. Good box art. That's why we uh, originally got it. Just a giant mech with explosions on the back. Hell yeah! I would say yeah, a giant mech like coming out of like an explosion in a wall or something like that, and like the new truck being like, you know, just randomly like pop art sticking out of the wall too. Uh, box art's what got me into Street Fighter. I mean, I know we had Street Fighter Two back in the day, right? Street Fighter Two Turbo on Sega, the worst version of that game. <laughs> You're saying we had that worst version? Yeah. Because, well, it's Sega Genesis. Oh, because we had the, uh, ours ran faster than uh, the Super Nintendo version, didn't oh, okay. it? Uh, well, but hear me out. We had the Sega Genesis controller. And the Sega Genesis controller we had had three buttons on it. And there are six, I, there are yeah. six buttons that you need to play Street Fighter 2. 
And so in order Basically, to switch from punches and kicks, you had to hit the start button in between your combo. Or if you were a Balrog, it just switched from one punch to another punch. <laughs> but yeah. No one plays Balrog. I used to main Balrog back in the day. What are you talking about? I loved his uh his C button, his C punch, and his head bash. Of course, I mean, it's just definitely his, not as much as Ryu. Ryu is my favorite next to Balanka. That's his name. Balanka? Well, I can't remember his name. Balanka, the lightning one. I mean, M. Bison was dope, too, back in the day. It's like, oh, crush out. Those were games we rented a lot. The Marvel vs. Capcom. Well, Marvel vs. Capcom? No, X-Men Children X-Men of the Atom versus and X-Men vs. Street yeah. Fighter. X-Men vs. Street Fighter is what the name of that one was. Yeah, actually, that's what it was, because I remember I'd always play as uh, like Sabretooth. Sabretooth, because he had the, where he'd snap, he'd be like, Birdie! Birdie! And then Birdie would be like, yes, boss! With the big laser gun. Or whatever, particle rifle. It was crazy. I love the art style of those games, too. That's why the second Marvel vs. Capcom was my favorite because of that art style. I miss the 2D sprite-based art style for fighting games. Yeah, I was... That, that's kind of a lost a lost thing. Uh, that was a... Uh, so, you've got your... Uh, you've made your decision, right? Based solely off of the box art or, like, your friend told you that it was a really cool game. Especially uh, friendship back in the day. Barring games back in the day was a huge pastime. I mean, most of the games I played were either borrowed from a friend. If they weren't borrowed from a friend, they were rentals. I didn't buy games myself until way into my late teens, early 20s. And then. I mean, disposable income back then. Do what? I see, with disposable income back then, right? As a kid? Well, yeah, you had all the time in the world with no disposable income. And then, because, you know, living out in the country, there's no uh, economic benefits for but someone you've gotten, I am, uh... so got your game you make your way up to the uh the counter they look up your account in the old dos system and was it like a law back then beep, beep, that beep, beep. every every rental place had that stupid little acrylic tower that was filled with water with the platform oh the neon one that you could like drop the pennies and quarters in yeah well you were supposed to drop quarters no one ever put quarters in there because they were a scam um and then you never run, you never win a free rental. You'd spend more money in quarters trying to win the free rental than if you were just rent the game. Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking I'm sure. about. Sure. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I can see them to this because they were also things. diners back in the day too. That was just a tip jar with extra steps. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was a culture that just is not not exists anymore. I mean, we've got you can go on Game Pass, you go on PlayStation Unlimited or Ultimate, whatever they're calling it now, and just try out any game that they have on there. They've got a huge library. I am looking forward to playing back through Legend of Dragoon. Now that that's on there, now that's on there. Oh, on the uh, PlayStation thing or whatever? Yeah. I do, I mean, I don't have a PS5, so I do want to play those games eventually. But I don't have a PS5 at the moment, so it'll probably be a minute. They're so nice. I do wish those were... I miss the PSP because, for me, turn-based RPGs are king on the go gaming kind of thing, as opposed to sitting down. PSP so games just... are king. No, uh, turn-based RPGs. Oh yeah. Like, for me, it's hard to sit down in front of a large TV on a console or computer and play a turn-based game nowadays. I have to like, if it's on my phone or on my PSP or PS Vita, like. Wow, we Fantastic. Have, we or have Switch two, nowadays. Two completely different uh, priorities on that. I can't have... I, I'm, as far as like even my Switch, um, I always leave Doc. You can't have anything loose around my house. Well, I mean, that's because the kids though, right? Kieran will... He'll, you see something with a screen? He's like, oh, I'm going to get me some of that. <laughs> I'm going to get me some of that. I'm going to press the buttons. I'm going to press, press that screen. Hey, so many good games we used to rent. So many good memories. And now, I mean, that's what, that's what, I guess the next generation is going to have is services like Game Pass, where you can just try out games. I, I want some engagement uh, with comment section. I want comment section to, uh, you know, what's a game you discovered, like, just renting? Or you saw the box art when you were a little kid, and you're like, I got to get me some of that. It turned out to be a great game. Or, on the converse side of that, What's something you thought was going to be awesome, and it turned out to be nothing like what you expected. Um, 
So yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Give us hit us up. Hit us up down in the comments. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, I just want to know did you rent games back in the day? If so, what were your thoughts on it? Do you miss it? And do you think every game nowadays should have a demo? Every game nowadays does have a demo. You just have to pay for it and they call it a beta. 